So welcome everybody to the Ask Joseph Land show. This is Monday, August the 29th. Uh, gosh, August is about finished uh, and summer is over. Children are going back to school. So amazing. <laughs> they went by in a hurry, didn't it? So uh, last night, um, last night, uh, Jennifer and I drove from Charleston, South Carolina, where we live, to Winston-Salem, North Carolina, where we also live. And we stopped outside of Charlotte. We were getting hungry. And we stopped outside of Charlotte to a, uh, a Mexican restaurant place in a beautiful area where we always stop. And, uh, and we said, we're just going to try some, some Mexican food and eat a little bit. And then we'll go on and we won't have to eat dinner tonight. And uh, I had some, a shrimp tacos. And I had the most violent case of food poisoning I've ever experienced. Last night, uh, almost time for bed, uh, Jennifer, I said, Jennifer, I've never had my stomach hurt like this. There's something we ate was wrong. She didn't have the shrimp, I did. And I'm telling you, I was sick all night uh, and have been sick most of the morning. And, um, but I don't know if you've ever had anything like that happen to you, but we're gonna call the, we're gonna call the restaurant and tell them they need to watch uh, the shrimp dish. <laughs> You know, not to complain in any way, but just, you know, I don't want anybody to feel like I, I felt here uh, the past uh, 12 hours. It really took all the energy out of me. And I'm a, I'm a very energetic guy. You know, I get up at 530 every morning and I'm ready to get after it this morning, man. I was crawling. I was crawling out of bed. So um, anyway, Mark, are you, are you watching people coming in for me? Yes, Joseph. Okay, great, thank you. Uh, uh, Tom Armour, welcome to the call today. Great to have you on. I just saw you come on. And Jennifer, Jennifer up in Canada, welcome. Great to have you on. The thank Canadian, you, sir. The Canadians are very well covered today. <laughs> How's everybody doing? Great. Good. Does anybody have a great story for me today? A great story on your business or a great story on what's happening in your life? Anybody want to start out today? Okay, Don. Hi. Uh, yes, I would like to let everyone know that I am free to teach Tai Chi Gong. I got the blessing of Master Lama Rasaji and Master David Paul and the Lama Sari to teach. So I'm an official instructor. Oh, wonderful! That's one of your that's one of your goals. Huge congratulations mine, yeah congratulations that's awesome i'm so proud of you yeah I'm, I'm looking to uh to work with people with addictions and teach them this wonderful system that has helped me so much that is great well you're such a go-getter and you're such a positive force so we're just can't wait to see all the great things that are going to happen in your life i'm excited too thanks me too me too uh, Bobby, last week we tried to get you to say a few words, Bobby. Uh, I don't know if you're in a position where you can because you're probably watching those screens, but just say a few words. Bobby has a hedge fund and trades. Bobby, hello. Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, yeah, I've just been crazy busy. Um, just been kind of figuring out that what type of uh, you know investor that I want to go after. I've had some people... You know, they'll contact me, set up a Zoom meeting, you know, with me, reach out to me, and then not show up. You know, I, I'm, I can't tell you how frustrating that is, you know. Um, but, um, you know, my, basically, my ideal client is, uh, you know, a, a Christian investor. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and uh, some people say, you know, well, why, why involve Jesus? You know, and so uh, I was like, well, he's the main reason behind all this. You know, he's the one that's basically pushed me for the past 20 years to do this. So um, I'm not doing this without him. Yeah. So, um, you know, and so there's different things that I, I, I have in the works right now. So that's why I'm just kind of spinning around and I'm busy. Um, I'm working on a book and then also I'll be launching like a, a podcast in a couple of weeks So as, as well. So just trying to do everything that I can to uh, invite in the, the right clients, you know. Good. 
Well, there's some people on this call that might could be a blessing to you. So put your information down in the chat. You know how I like to do things, guys. I like for us all to network with each other and you make your own decisions, but I want people to know what you're doing. So uh, Bobby, do that for me. And, uh, and I, you and I, when I get back to Charleston, you and I'll have a discussion as well. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how to reach you, except unless your cell phone is the same as it was like two years ago. It is the exact same. Okay, all right. I'll text you. Great. Well, great. Well, thank you. Thank you, Bobby, for that. And uh, great, great to have you on today and really proud of what you're doing. Um, I want to say one thing about what Bobby said. This is my pet peeve. All right. I want to say one thing about what he said. He said that people call him to schedule a meeting and then they don't show up. Isn't that amazing? That's an integrity issue as far as I'm concerned. And if you ever have somebody tell you that they're going to try to make a meeting with you, that means they're not going to do it. Right. It ain't about trying with me. If I tell you I'm going to be on a meeting with you, you can put it in the bank. All right. And, you know, what happened, what happened to our society when people used to say, my word is my bond and you can count on me. I know Tom Henderson probably can expound on this, but you know what? If, if I tell you that if you invite me and I tell you that I'm going to join you in something and I'm going to be there at 10 o'clock, my word is my bond. When somebody tells you they're going to try to be there, you write this down. They're not going to, they, they're telling you they're not going to be there. It ain't about trying. It's about being. So, uh, man, you just push my button on that, Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, man, I tell you, uh, um, I have a call with Rachel tomorrow and I'm not going to miss it. You know, unless the Lord takes me home, I'm not going to miss it. You know why? Because I told her I'd be there. And many of you guys, you know, Shane and Jerry and many of you guys. So, uh, it's just, it's, it's called integrity and it's called doing what you say you're going to do. Tom, can you expound on that a little bit? Tom Henderson. Yeah, it just, you know, working with you and Tommy Armour and stuff over the years, you know, if you make a commitment, be there. Um, just, uh, one real quick thing here, about a minute and 10 seconds, um, a friend of mine, um, over G5 church over by Orlando. Uh, they do a Tuesday night uh, Bible study and different topics. And one of the topics they were talking about was what you were talking about earlier today, time. And I just wanted to read this real quick here. It says, imagine there is a bank that credits your account each morning with $86,400. Uh, it carries over no balance from day to day. Every day, every evening, it deletes whatever part of the balance you have failed to use during the day. What would you do? You draw every cent out, of course. Uh, each of us every day has such a bank, and it's named Time. Uh, every morning, it credits you with 86,400 seconds, and every night, it writes it off as a loss, whatever you failed to use for the day or invest. It carries no balance and no rollover minutes, and allows no overdrafts. Each day opens your account for you each night. It burns whatever remains of the day. If you fail to use the day's deposits, the loss is yours. There's no going back. There's no drawing against tomorrow. You must live in the present and today's deposits. Invest it so that you will get the utmost out of health, happiness, and success. The clock is running. Make the most of today. And I just thought that um, with what well, you were talking about time earlier, um, we just, we've only got so many minutes. Time is the only thing that we cannot create more of. And yes. Just, um, I just, when she was talking about that uh, and reading that the other night, I just thought that was, we, we take time for granted sometimes uh, and we need to put a value, extreme value on time. Isn't that great? That, that's a great story. Mark Chua uh, posted that for me last week too, as well. That's, oh, okay. Uh, great. Yeah, it, it yeah. is, it is really, um, it is really amazing. You know, I'll, I, I add to that by saying, you know, money is not the currency of life. It's time. Um, time is the currency of life. Yeah. And you never see a rich man lying in the hospital bed dying and say, I wish I had more money. They all say, I wish I had more time with my family. I wish I had more time with my children. I wish I had more time with my loved ones. And so time is so precious. 
And, you know, I want to tell you guys, um, I've lost seven friends this year, seven friends that passed on. And, uh, and uh, Jennifer and I always say, you know, time is so precious to us that we're going to stop. We're going to stop and, and enjoy the moment, enjoy the person that we're with, enjoy the conversation that we're having, you know, enjoy our life. And so it's just really important to slow down just a moment uh, to, to realize that, as Tom just said, time is the currency of life and you can't manufacture it. You can make money, but you can't make time. And it's just so, so critical. Tom Armour, what do you think? I agree. And that, that's very powerful. I had never heard that one before, but uh, I wrote that one down. That's that really, thanks Tom Henderson for that one. That really, uh, really made me think of what, what the priorities are here. So. That's right. I've been invest. I've been investing some time in some new projects and new websites and things that I've been working on, and uh, you know, it's really that is absolutely right on target. That is probably the most important thing we do, and we got to enjoy ourselves along the process as well. Because you never look back and say, "I wish, I wish I had spent more time doing that." You never say that. <laughs> I've never said that. <laughs> That's right. That's right. I want to get my wife on here to say a few words to you guys. Um, you know, I want to, I want to be totally transparent with you guys always. Um, Jennifer and I run a sizable business together, so several sizable businesses. And I like to say she's, I'm the fluff and she's the stuff. <laughs> she's the real stuff. Um, but she's the smart one and the pretty one. So that just tells me that life is unfair. You know, she's more smarter than I am and prettier than I am. Um, but she and I, uh, have been in a battle for uh, four days with a company um, with a company over an invoice, a very substantial invoice, uh, and and it dealt with regulations and importing and that kind of thing. And that's all I'll say about that. But it was a very sizable six figure invoice, and they were wrong, and we were right. And my wife supported me through this like a like a champion and she said god will god will win this for us and about 15 minutes before we got on this call god won this for us and and they admitted they were wrong and we were right and we weren't trying to be right we were just trying to do right right and if we'd owe the money we'd already paid it uh so jennifer why don't you just say a few things you're your counsel to me, you're teaming up with me, you're getting me watching my wife get on her knees when we got the result and, and thanking God for the result was just a really powerful experience for me uh, today. And uh, I want you to hear what my wife said about it. Go ahead, honey. There we go. You, okay, this is totally from the hip, but how many times do we imagine the worst thing happening? And it never does. And, you know, what we did was we figured out our worst case scenario and the best case scenario. And it's very hard to accept news too on a Friday afternoon at, at 4.30 when you know you can't do anything about it. And you have the whole weekend to, you just, you know, to think about it, to, to worry over it. And I think, you know, all of us can say we've been in that position before where, you know, where it just ruined our weekends and our time with our family back to the, the valuable point of, you know, you can't take time back. And, um, you know, of course, you know, with even with children it's just you know you worry about the worst case scenario and you just it's just my faith has just really grown stronger and stronger even over the weekend you know it's still a learning curve every day is and you know you just have to it's so hard to do it but and I, I think to practice it and really believe it and it gets to where it's just paralyzes you almost in, in fear and worry and you just something just clicked in and just 
I've just really felt the faith take over this whole situation. And I know all of you have been in this position before, whether, you know, you thought you even lost a friend or you've lost a loved one and they end up coming back to you. So it's a great Monday morning um, thought. And the special thing about it is, is that I think we all share this faith, this strong faith of community together. And it's comforting to know that. And, and I think our, our faith from each and every one of you has grown stronger every day because we meet and we pray and we share our concerns. So it's a blessing. That's right. That's right. And, yeah. and see, sometimes, sometimes, um, sometimes God uses an experience to teach you. Uh, you know, so this experience for us where we had this huge invoice, we knew it wasn't right, and we had to state our case. So what do we have to do? We had to study this huge book of regulations. And you know what? I told Jennifer about 30 minutes ago, I said, you know what? Uh, the blessing in all this is I know these regulations now as good as they do, right? I know these regulations now as good as our import company does as it applies to our business. And they had to backtrack and say that we were right. Uh, and that's very difficult for someone in their position to do. And that's the Lord's favor. I want to tell you, it's not us. It's God's favor on us that made that happen. And so I want to make sure you always understand where I come from with things like that. But, you know, taking off on a point that Jennifer made, you know, Mark, what was it Mark Twain that said, I've had some terrible things happen. And I have, I've, I've seen some terrible things in my life and some of them actually happen. You know, in other words, in other words, he's thought about some terrible things, but they never actually happen. Right. And, and so it's amazing how we can think the worst instead of the best. And, uh, and I caught myself in this situation doing that. And so, uh, so thank goodness for my helpmate of, of a steady hand and encouraging me to be my best. So any, does that relate to anybody? Anybody? How about you, Rachel? I see you smiling. That's an ongoing struggle that I have, Mr. Land, is to stop looking at the worst case scenario. <laughs> I always do that. And then I have to pray through it and just realize that there's really, it's not that big of a deal. Like nothing's that big of a deal because God's always got us if we put him first. So okay. that's right. That's right. Well, Tracy, I'd like for you to unmute yourself and say a few words and tell us a little bit about uh, you and what you're doing. And so say hello to everybody. Hi, everybody. I know Dawn. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I'm, I'm in the training for the Tai Chi Gong right now, too. So just taking it slow because I've been God has spoke to me about slowing down and waiting on him instead of getting ahead of him. I'm good at that. So it's been very interesting, but I really heard what you said about the, the sale and waiting on God and, you know, letting him direct your way. A few years ago, I had a, I raised alpacas for about 12 years and I sold all my alpacas for a, a good lot of money and she didn't get paid for them so my husband encouraged me he says let the lawyers look after it you stay out of it so I did to a point but I'll tell you I prayed hard <laughs> and again God's favor was on me we made a deal and I got paid and I, I just know it's God first in in, in all my dealings and you know, we run, a, a, or no, we have an oil fill business here and, you know, and I know we've been favored too. So yes, you go through your trials and your tribulations with it. But, you know, I think when we put uh, the Lord first in our lives, things, we are favored and we yeah. know that. So amen. Thank you for, thank you for listening, everybody. Amen. You're a wonderful yeah. lady. I'm yeah. so honored that yeah. you're on I'm yeah. so honored that you're on today with us. And, you know, Jennifer and I feel the same way, exact same way. Yeah. Yeah. So thankful. Yeah. You yeah. know, so yeah. So that, that is, that is really good. Uh, anybody else? Dave, how about you today? How are you doing today over in Georgia? Great. 
Um, <clears throat> just my head's a little bit somewhere else because I, uh, my uh, brother's grandson, uh, about six months old, had heart surgery today to repair a hole in his heart, and he came through it. Wonderful. So uh, praise God for that. So your your brother's grandchild. We're happy about that. Yes, yes. And what is the grandchild's they, name? Is it adopted? Yeah. Uh, Luke. Luke. Well, let's let's all pray for I mean, Luke. Of some yeah, he, he was born to an addicted mother and adopted by my nephew. So surgery was successful for today, but I'm sure he still has challenges. And any prayers are welcome. Thank you. Wow. Thank you, Dave. I knew I was supposed to call on you. Uh, let's stop a moment. Let's stop a moment. Tom, would you pray for a little Luke? Tom Henderson? Yeah, dear Lord, uh, just put your hands on him um, and the challenges ahead of him in life and um, coming on. Just let him be a blessing um, and let him be blessed, dear Lord, uh, and overcome the situations in life that he's going to have to face as he goes forward, dear Lord, and any new problems and situations, just let him know that uh, he can find comfort in you and just hold the little child in your heart, dear Lord, and just, just be with them and be with the family as they fight through the struggles and stuff. Uh, just always be a peace for them. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Dave, for sharing that with us. I know that was hard, difficult for you to share. Yeah. I just want you to know I love you, Dave, and your family, and always a blessing to see you on the show. Thank you. Awesome. Jerry, how are you doing today? Jerry Llewellyn, how are you doing today? <clears throat> I'm great, Joseph. Thanks so much for uh, letting me be on the call. Uh, rather than sharing about my business, I have something funny to share that just might be fun for everybody. Uh, does anybody know what squirrels spluting means? Because kind of raise your hand if you know what it is. I just kind of curious. Say that again. Spluting. S P L O O T I N G. Squirrels do this. Spluting. 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 I have no idea. All right. All right. So here's the here's the statement. It's so hot in Texas, the squirrels are spluting. Okay. So. <laughs> On our porch, these pretty sizable black squirrels, uh, squirrels, they spread eagle out on the concrete, the cool concrete creek pad of my porch, of our porch. Wow. Okay, it's an enclosed, it's a, you know, a covered porch, so it's, it's no sunlight, and the, and the concrete, not the concrete, the cement is, is uh, flooring, is cooler by far than anything that's out in the, in the woods. So these squirrels are spread eagle, and you can go on YouTube and Google squirrels spluting in Texas, <laughs> and, and you'll get a video that comes up. And they spread eagle, and they're they're like roadkill. You know, they're, they're spread out. <laughs> but I'm sure you can take a metaphor for that in some ways. That you know that we 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 spread eagle to God, right? We we yeah. we, we we get cool. We get uh, uh, nourished uh, in our relationship with God, just like these squirrels are getting, you know, five or 10 degrees difference by, by flattening themselves out. And, and uh, it's, it's worth, it's, it's like a little bit of a comedy, so it's worth looking at, but the squirrels are serious about it. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. All right. so that's all I have to say, say today. I'm great. in a great mood because I, of the I want to say a, I want to say a few words about Jerry. Jerry's one of the eight people I work our with. Our bulldogs do Jerry's one of the eight people I work with personally, and he is a very talented guy. He has a company called Business Whisperer. <laughs> and, uh, Jerry, you want to you want to talk a little bit about? By the way, he's a very talented uh, guy as far as writing and uh, you know uh, poetry and all this stuff. He sent me a a beautiful thing that Jennifer and I love, uh, Jerry. I'll talk to you more about it uh, on Thursday. Okay. okay. But uh, just tell people a little bit about what we're doing. Just tell people a little bit. Well, um, 
what we're doing is looking through Joseph's eyes at what Jerry's capabilities are. And it's a amazing adventure to uh, allow somebody to do that and to respect and trust somebody enough to do that. So it's a great journey for me. Uh, uh, and he's looking at some of the knowledge and talent that I have expressed in my business consulting life. Um, you know, I've worked for a, an international company that sent me around doing strategic plans and organizational development type work with companies, mostly from uh, coast to coast and then up to Canada. And so when I went into private uh, consulting myself as a management consulting, I worked with those same types of clients um, ranging from probably 2 million to 20 million was probably the sweet spot. But I, we had people 50 and 100 million that I was working with. But what was true is that all the knowledge that I had as an executive in, in business for 20 some years before I did this, I was able to scale to what smaller businesses need um, um, and help them then you know, become more efficient, more productive, all the things that businesses need to, need to do. Uh, and I had a unique focus in that, um, you know, scratch the surface and I have a, a very long suit in working with people and human resources. And so I really cared about people. So putting all of that together, I've been led to talk to business owners and executives about what they do uh, and help them see who they are where they want to go. And because I can see what they need to do to get to where they want to go, and I can also see where they want to go and where I believe they can go, I can help bridge that gap so that they can begin to see it too. And actually, Joseph is doing that same thing for me. <laughs> so the doctor is getting his medicine, and uh, I'm appreciative of that. And uh, it's been a great journey so far and sticking to it. So thank you, Joe, for that. Thank you, Jerry. We love you. Jennifer and I love you and can't wait to see you and your wife come visit us sometime. Um, you know, um, I'm going to go to Tom Chester here in just a minute. But one of, one of the pet peeves I have in my, in my uh, online life is that when people, um, people who've never built a business or never owned a business, or never had any favorable success in a business, uh, pretend that they can help you build a business. Uh, you, uh, there are too many people that go to a seminar, and I'm not knocking it. I'm just telling you my position. And you know what? Uh, in life today, instead of canceling each other out, it's, it's, it's probably good to understand each other's positions. And so when somebody wants to tell me their position about something, I just listen with open arms because I might learn something, right? And so my position on this, as I discussed with Tom Chester a number of times is, hey, I am the guy who's actually done it. I didn't go to a seminar and get a degree. I built a $200 million company from scratch. My wife and I are building one right now. And, and we just shared some of that with you guys. Um, and, you know, my wife has more more wise counsel than I do because she sees it in a different way than I do. And so we're all we're all advancing and growing together and it's so important to see it. but but Tom Chesser just joined us and Tom uh, owns Rise Up Media and Marketing and, and just a, a, a wonderful promoter of people like me. Tom, you want to say a few words to the group today? I just saw yeah. you come in. Yeah, I jumped in with Jennifer was talking and, you know, talking about an experience that happened on Friday that went bad or could have went bad. I don't know how that I didn't hear the whole thing. I, I'll rewatch this later, you know, because just recently I had been doing a deal for 400, 500 million dollars. And somebody just blew that to pieces because they they got their ego got in the way. And anyway, so what I noticed about that is when one door closes, another door of opportunity God creates will open. If he sees that something in your life is not what it should be or what it's supposed to be, or somebody's going to interfere with it or somebody's going to mess it up, God has something better in plan for you. Because then 
all of a sudden, then I, I get a deal that is now, you know, $500 million, 3% towards the finder's fee, and then 47% equity in the company. You know, God has a way of working things out when you think there's no way, or when you think that, you know, why does things happen and why does things come our way that just seem to interfere with the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven and what God intends to do on this earth. You know, the beauty of what I see even today, and I've heard partially, is all you people are relying. So I went to church Sunday and I'm in service and the song and the worship and all the praise and everything else was God never fails and God never lies. God keeps every one of his promises in line, right? Because he's, he's made a promise to you that if you trust in him and if you seek him and if you put him first, God is going to make all things work together for the good of those that are called according to his purpose, right? So trust in the one that told you above that everything was going to be okay, and it will be okay, you know, and then I'm on the screen, I get another kind of funny affirmation, success doesn't just come and find you, you have to go out and find it, thank you, Jennifer, uh, that's on the screen right now, so, you know, I appreciate people like Jennifer and Joseph Land that are guiding light that wants to help somebody else find their way, or shine light on something that even you're looking at maybe even close, but not close enough, and to add value. Each and every one of you are a value-added proposition in the life of somebody else once you invest in them, right? Invest in other people, and I guarantee you, even though you'll have disappointments like I had this weekend, where somebody that I thought was in my inner circle sent an email that uh, just basically tried to undercut me slander me, do everything they could. And the person that they sent it to fought back and said, no, 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 no. You're not going to do that to Tom Jesser. You know, no, you know, and said that that showed their true character. So trust and lay yourself at the feet of Jesus or God, whatever you believe in, just believe that you believe that you believe that you believe because it's going to give to you. And God's always going to open another door when another door shuts, that's even bigger and better than the one you were going to walk into. And that's basically what I wanted to add today. So I am, and I'm looking at Joseph. I saw your deal. I'm so excited. I hear about the, the horse race. Yes. yes. Yeah, I, got, I, I got my, I got my betting slip right here. Where's that at? Okay. Let's see. What are we betting on today? Uh, All right. Well, thank you, Tom. Guys, I want to, um, I want to make sure I call on a couple more people and I want to talk to you about what you can learn from a Kentucky Derby horse. But um, I want to call on uh, Miles. Miles, how are you doing today? Doing real good. Thank you, Joseph. You're doing well. Great. How's everything out in Hawaii today? Everything is good. Sun's coming up. Um, I've been really excited about a business that I've been working with in breakthrough affordable stem cell technology. I've tried it out. I've worked with it for many years. It's really enhanced my life. It increases stamina and endurance. The older we get, the, the least amount of stem cells we produce naturally. So this is a way to produce them without anything entering the body. It's just the, um, it's wow. a photo frequency that communicates the body to produce more of these copper peptides that in turn tell the body to produce more stem cells and there's Great. much more to it. That's awesome, Miles. Thank you for sharing that. You know, uh, in my life, I've always had coaches like professional ball or football in school or whatever. I've always had great coaches, business coaches, all that. And one of the coaches that Jennifer and I use is on this health coaches that we use is on this call, Shane Forbes. So I want you and Shane to, to uh, trade information so that she can learn about that and um, make it dummy proof for me. And then we ought to all get on a conversation. I'd like to, I like to learn more about that. And if there's a product to buy or something that's good for me, uh, Jennifer and I are always interested in things like that. Okay. Thank you. All right. You okay. guys, you guys exchange information. That would be great. Um, I saw somebody else on the call today. Uh, Catherine, how are you? Hi, everybody. I've really enjoyed the wisdom coming through. Um, 
Yes, it's really lovely to be here. Thank you. Wonderful. Tell us a little bit about you. It's great to have you on. Yes, thank you. I, I live in Utah and, um, you know, I've been just kind of uh, reflecting on everything that you've been saying and I've had two dark nights of the soul um, and I have this dream and I, I've had an entrepreneurial spirit since I was in my early 20s and um, it just seemed like everything that I was trying just, you know, wasn't really working and at one point I really hired coaches and to bring my business through and um, and gave it my best for three years, like just really did what they told me to do and nothing was really working. And I just kind of threw my hands up and thought, oh my gosh, maybe I don't know anything. And yeah. so um, right now what's happening is there's like this huge breakthrough that's happening. And um, I really, I, I, I can go to the core root cause of a belief system and permanently help someone remove it on all levels it works because it's on a, a soul level it's on a body mind emotional level and it works every time and i get to see miracles happen and so it's it's like this breakthrough came through and now um people are coming to me and I and know. hiring me and it's like i it's kind of like the second dark night of the soul was like a dam came down I was a nurse and I was, you know, making lots of money and then I got fired. They couldn't see my light. Wow. You know, I used wow. to sing to the elderly and give out their pills and every little cell in your body is healthy. Every little cell in your body is well. I can tell every little cell, every little cell in your body is well. Now, can you feel that? Yes. Can you feel that? Yeah. So, you know, I used to sing and dance to the elderly and they just loved me. And they, you know, I was there for six years. So that really brought up a lot of core stuff for me. And finally, I'm breaking through all of that. And so, and it is a lot of what you've ta taught, you know, you've taught like being in your integrity because how you treat someone else is how yes. you treat yourself. Yes. And that's why we're all here. Joseph, because you ooze integrity and we get, and we trust someone who's in, in their integrity. Amen. Amen. So I really, you know, I've just really enjoyed everybody. <laughs> Catherine, Thank that you. was, that was so powerful. Thank you so <laughs> much for that. That was really beautiful. Mm, thank, thank you for you. being on the show today. Yeah. Thank you so you know, much. Like, may I tell you all the story about integrity? Um, I used to have a large trucking company and in our operations center, there were 75, 80, 100, 100 people. And I sat right in the middle of the room at an X shaped desk. And across from me was my administrative assistant. And so we were in a smaller town and people would come to my company wanting a job. And I would say to them, if you want to make hundred thousand dollars a year, I will show you how to do that but you have to listen to and do exactly what I tell you. If you don't, you won't last. And so I would sit them down by me. There was always an open spot by me. I'd sit them down and I say, the first thing you need to learn to do is talk on two phones at one time because we're running 2000 trucks all across North America and Canada and Mexico. And you know, you got to be able to make it, make it happen here. And you got to be able to see the board and see where everything is. And you got to know your lane that you're going to stay in. And, uh, and so they would sit there with me and some would make it and some wouldn't. And, and then if they made it through the first cut, I would say, now, now here, uh, you know, I played baseball, right? Yes, sir, Mr. Lane, we know you play baseball. I said, well, you know, in my game here, you don't get three strikes, you get one. You know, in baseball, you get three strikes. In my game, you get one. And here's a strike that will take you out of making a great living for your family. If you tell a lie to my customer or to my driver, you're done. There's no second chance because we can fix what happens if we tell the truth. Equipment breaks down, uh, people make mistakes. All of those things are fixable 
But when you tell the customer a lie about a, about a mechanical problem and the truck is not going to make delivery on time, you got to remember the lie you told so you can lie again. Just tell the truth. Hey, we're dealing in first class mechanical equipment. Sometimes it causes problems, you know? And, uh, and, you know, when I tell people that story, they say, you know what? You're exactly right. And when you walk in that kind of integrity and you tell people the truth that you're doing business with, man, you get blessed. You get blessed. I'll give you another example. Jennifer and I um, are redoing a, a lot of work on our home in Winston-Salem. And so we prayed about a contractor and we talked to a couple. Then one young man walks through our front door and God just tells me, that's the one I want you to use. I give him a hug and I say, I know God sent you here. This is going to be great. Today, he's sitting here at my desk with me in, in our home. And he said, you don't know what an impact you've made on my life. He says, you have been such a positive force. Uh, you've encouraged me to stay with my wife. Uh, you've encouraged me to read the Bible. You've encouraged me to read my devotional Jesus calling. In fact, you gave them both to me. And he says, you know what? He says, I know that I was supposed to be here just like you told me I was, but it wasn't to fix your house. It's to get fixed myself. Isn't that cool? And, uh, and so you never know what door is being opened that you need to stand up and be who you've been called to be in your life, just like Catherine. Catherine, that was so powerful. I love that. Thank you. So, uh, so I'm going to talk to you guys today. Anybody ever, everybody ever watched the Kentucky Derby? And by the way, I want to say one more thing, Rasaji. Master Lama Rasaji, I've known for 35 years. Awesome guy. A lot of you guys come to me from him, and a lot of people go from me to him. Jennifer is really close friends with Mita, Rasaji's wife. And I spend a lot of time with Rasaji every week on the phone. And you guys who are working with him right now are getting the right first class information uh, about Tai Chi and those things. And I want you to know how proud I am of you for working with him in that regard. And, uh, and I'm going to be on a show with he and Jimmy on Wednesday. So uh, we're going to be talking about finance and, and what I see happening globally in the finance world and how I think maybe the dollar might be, not be as important in other countries as it has been and some things of that nature. But uh, right now, I want to talk to you guys. I want you to get your pens and paper out. This, we're going to have a little bit of fun. I want to talk to you about life lessons you can learn from a Kentucky Derber, Derby winning horse. You ever think you could win? Uh, you, you ever think you could learn something from a horse? Well, this year's Kentucky Derby, Derby winner was called Rich Strike. And you need to go back on YouTube and watch the race again. It is so powerful. So, you know, Rich Strike uh, wasn't even supposed to be in the race. He was just an average horse, and they just needed one of the one of the multi-million dollar horses got hurt and had to scratch, had to withdraw. And so they had to fill the position with a with an also run kind of horse. And so guess who they picked? They picked Rich Strike. But you know what? Rich Strike didn't know that he was an also run. He didn't know he was just an ordinary horse. He didn't know he was a filler. As a matter of fact, Rich Strike cost $30,000, $30,000. And he was running against horses that cost three, five, ten million million. But he didn't know that. They just looked like horses to him, right? And so he wasn't the biggest horse on, on the track. He wasn't the best horse on the track. He had the worst starting position on the track. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? He had the worst starting position. And you know what? He won the race going away. He smoked them. Why did he do it? Because he didn't, he didn't think all those things about himself that other people were saying. Hey, he was just a horse and he was born to run. And he was just looking for his opportunity. He was just looking for the gate to open for him to run his best race against those three and four and five million dollar horses. Guess what? Oh, Rich Strike, oh, $30,000 Rich Strike won the Kentucky Derby. And you know why? Because life is not about having the best of everything. Life is not about being the biggest on the track 
or the most favored on the track. Life is about the size of your heart. See, Ridge, Ridge Strike had a huge heart. Ridge Strike had a bigger heart at $30,000 worth than the three and $5 million horses did. He had a better heart. He had a heart to win. He didn't care what the odds were. He was going to win. You know what? I can apply this to every one of y'all's business right now. You know, you're, sometimes you second guess yourself. Well, you know what? If I can only get so-and-so. You know what? You have everything you need to be successful. You know what? You got Jennifer and me to push you on and to cover your back and to help you win. All we're looking for is your heart, you know? And so heart and dedication to be your best and excel at everything you do is all that's asked of you. It doesn't matter what your pedigree is. Heck, man, I was born, my father worked in a mill. We had nothing. I got no pedigree. But you know what? I got heart. And I'm going to run for the roses every day I get up. I'm going to run for the roses for my family. I'm going to run for the roses for you guys to prove to you you can be successful too. Because if I can do it from a population 3,000 town, come from my family, my father worked in a mill with a fifth grade education, everybody I know can be successful. And you know what? Rich Strike just said, I'm going to do it. He just said, hey, man, I got heart. He, 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 I, I can imagine him looking up at that jockey and saying, hold on, brother, we're going for a ride. And when he turned, when he turned the second turn, he, he showed him his tail, but it, it was, it was, it was beautiful. And so guess what people are saying about Rich Strike now? Wow, that's some horse. That's a great horse. Man, that horse could command some exorbitant stud fees because he's a Kentucky Derby winner. Isn't it amazing how people's perspective changes when you do what you've been called to do, no matter what the chatter is around you, no matter who's talking, who's saying what, it doesn't matter what they say. Only thing that matters is what you do, right? Hey man, I'm blocking out all that noise. I'm going to call Joe and Jennifer. I'm going to get encouragement from them. Hey, if I'm down, they're going to pull me up. They're going to tell me to get back in the saddle and go and win the race, right? And see, I believe this is what we all got to do, men and women, is we got to have great hearts. We got to have great hearts. You know what my high school advidance counselor told me? <laughs> oh, this is beautiful. She says, you need to go into some vocational type job work because you're never going to be successful you're never going to be able to graduate from college and you're never going to be successful in your life 200 million dollar company and 160 million dollar company later and starting a golf tournament in my own hometown to benefit kids who couldn't afford to go to college we've sent 43 kids to college in the last 43 years because I didn't listen to that woman. Amen. I love her anyway, but I didn't listen to her. That, that was not the calling on my life. The calling on my life was to get out of the gate and run with everything I got to be successful for my family and to be successful for the accessorial people that depend on you to be your best. Those kids that went to college depended on me to run my best race so that they could get the benefit of that blessing. My parents wanted, deserved for me to run my best race so that they could receive the benefit of that blessing. My wife and children, eight children, Jennifer and I have, they, they deserve for me to run my best race every day so that they can read the, so they can reap the accessorial blessing. You understand what I'm saying? When you have success, it affects a bunch of people that you have no idea that affects. I had somebody tell me one day, you won't know until you get to heaven how many people you've blessed. Isn't that amazing? And, and I want you guys to be like Rich Strike. I want you to run like there's no tomorrow. Don't listen to people telling you you are a $30,000 horse. 
when you know that you are a thoroughbred $10 million horse. You know you are because God created you. And all these people that have been quacking, I, I call them ducks. So you can either be an eagle or you can be a duck. All these people all my life been quacking around me. Oh, nobody from our town ever made the big leagues. You're not going to do it either. Quack, quack, quack. Uh, you know, hey, man, you're never going to be successful in the trucking business. You don't know anything about it. Quack, quack, quack. Uh, you know, hey, you're never going to be successful investing money. Uh, you know, crack, 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 crack. And guess what? When we did it all and we were monumental successful in it all, guess what they said? They quit quacking and they all wanted to be a part of it. Right? So you can make them quack. You can listen to the quack or you can go forward in your dream and you can run your race like you're a $10 million thoroughbred horse. Don't look to the right or to the left. Don't listen to what anybody's saying. If they're not encouraging you, they're not in your circle. Amen? Amen. And, and I'll tell you, I have some great friends on this call. And I see some, sometimes God's given me the ability to see what others can't see. I talk about having eyes that see, not eye, having eyes that look. Most people look at things and never see it. Most people look at Rich Strike in the paddock and said, he'll never make, never make it. When he got in the starting gate, he didn't think that. He ran and he won. And so when we get off this phone, you're getting ready to get back in the starting gate and whatever you're doing, you think about Rich Strike. You run your best race and you never, ever, ever let anybody tell you what you can't do. You just remember, that's just quacking. You do what you've been called to do, and Jennifer and I will Jennifer and I will encourage you and bless you every step of the way. So I love you guys. Was that helpful today? Yeah. Extremely. Yes. Thank you so much. Yeah. Wonderful. I am so impressed with that story. I shared the YouTube video for Rich Strike on chat. Awesome. Great job, Joe. That's an amazing story. Amazing story, isn't it? Yeah, beautiful. He never but thought. He never thought for a minute what they were. He never thought what they were thinking. He just thought he was a winner. Yeah, that reminds me of Sea Biscuit because I I always relate to Sea Biscuit because I've I've always had this entrepreneurial urge and then it's like I could see I came in with the gift of seeing the beauty in everyone and everything but I couldn't always see it in myself so I had to really go deep within and now the breakthrough so yeah. I, I can relate to that. It's beautiful. Thank you. That was fun. I laughed a lot. You, you know, um, Catherine, um, in life, just like the story with Rich Strike, when you set out to do something different and you're not satisfied living in the city of ordinary, the people who want to keep you in the city of ordinary will always challenge your dream. They will always challenge why you're doing it. They'll always challenge the stuff. Don't feel hard toward them. Don't feel hard toward them. Just do what you've been called to do anyway and bless them and say, hey, hey, thank you for your input. I appreciate that. And say in your spirit, I'm not receiving that. Oh. You see, see, people would tell me, well, you're never going to be stuff to doing that. And I would say, well, thank you, for, thank you for your input. And I'd say to myself, Lord, I'm not receiving that because I know you call me to greatness. You see, what are we telling ourselves? And, and so there are going to be people along the way. And just remember, I said the, the, the duck thing to make you laugh, but they're just going to be quack. And that's what they're designed to do. But you are an eagle. You get way up above it all, right? And you soar, right? You get way above it all. Jennifer and I are eagles. We don't participate in that kind of stuff. Hey, last night when I was sick, my wife was taking care of me, right? We're in it to win it, no matter what we got to do, right? And <laughs> that's what you got to do. And I'm all in. I'm all in the Joseph Land show. I'm all into you, you guys' lives and seeing you excel and be better. I'm all in. And so I want you to know I love you today. Bill Metzger, it's great to have you on the call. Thank one you. Of my, you're one of my favorite people up there in Kentucky. Yeah. I was talking about your state with the Kentucky Derby. <laughs> And I know you got a kick out of that. 
Oh, I did. I loved it. Thank you. Wonderful. Mm-hmm. Wonderful. Blessing. Good. Well, anybody else have anything to say before we close out our call today? Thank you for joining me today. Shane? Oh, I just want to thank everyone for sharing all these really deep things. Um, It's just so special to be part of a group like this where we trust one another and can uh, go come from our hearts and learn from each other and lift each other up. So thank you so much. I feel so blessed by all of you. Every time I get on a call and I see Shane on the call and Miles on the call, I start feeling sorry for myself because one's in Nantucket and one's in Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all better look out. Jennifer and I are going to be coming to you soon. Be coming to visit you. <laughs> great, great. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, good. I'm going to end this call, but I want everybody to stay just a minute. Hold on just a minute. Thank you for joining the Ask Joseph Land Show today, everyone.